at that point, Hans was not able to play that event. He sustained an injury just uh, a couple days before at the, the tune-up tournament before the Easter Bowl and then moving into the national clay courts. Uh, McNally was not only the champion, but he actually defeated Hans there. So yeah, McNally winning the two major titles this year, obviously garnishing quite a few ranking points and giving him the number one seeding. But um, Hans is the only person you know, anywhere near this age that's actually been able to defeat McNally multiple times here in the last year and a half. So this is their fourth meeting, but uh, McNally winning the most recent, but Hans actually winning the first two. And John McNally yesterday already tasting a bit of what championship tennis feels like, uh, taking the doubles championship yesterday with his partner Gianni Ross. Does that give him any sort of psychological edge coming into today's singles final? Well, obviously he's coming in on a, on a high. It, it certainly uh, is much better than, than losing a, a tough match and trying to come back the next day. So he's he's got to be feeling pretty good. Yeah, you always want to win that match. Hopefully, as I talked to John earlier this morning, he talked a little bit about the fact that he wants to integrate some net opportunities when you know it presents itself. And winning that doubles for sure gives him some of that confidence to connect to that and use that aspect of his game or any aspect necessary to win today. Also, I think that the, the match just has some unique dynamics because clearly they're playing for a piece in history, you know, here on the Kalamazoo court. But beyond that, you know, they're playing for U.S. Open wild card straight into the main draw of the juniors, which is a rather prestigious coveted wild card. And then lastly, you know, there's two guys that obviously have been going back and forth and they, they want the bragging rights of this title. So there's a lot of different issues that they're facing as they will start competing here and trying to battle throughout. We've gotten the insight of the, some of the tournament officials throughout the week and those responsible for bringing this tournament to Kalamazoo for the last 72 years. Mark, I want to um, pose this question to you. This year, uh, they dedicate center court here where we will play both the singles final matches to uh, George Acker. Just your thoughts on, on him and his um, illustrious career here in Kalamazoo. Yeah, obviously there's been a lot more <coughs> positive things done to the facility. I noticed that coming up. I really enjoy the preservation of history. Obviously, George Acker, one of the best that's ever been, you know, coaching and, and helping players at the collegiate level. And I feel that often some of those, I mean, everyone in basketball knows who John Wooden is, but we sometimes don't always, I mean, obviously everyone knows Dick Gould at Stanford, but some of the, the more unsung heroes or some guys that did the same level of work and touched that many, you know, children and, and competitors' lives, uh, I really think should be celebrated. So it's, it's rather apropos that it's a George Acker court now, and hopefully the, the boys will understand why they're playing on that court throughout. You know, I've known, uh, known New George from the mid '60s on, and uh, <clears throat> I don't think uh, you'll ever find a, a finer coach or person. I mean, he just was uh, just one of the great ones that came along, you know, and. Uh, Did a wonderful job here at Kalamazoo, and and not only uh, for the Nationals, but uh, but also with his career at uh, Kalamazoo College. He was uh, just an outstanding uh, young man, coach, and uh, you know we all miss him. Practice continues as we get set for the 16 singles final here from George Acker Court at Stowe Stadium on the campus of Kalamazoo College. Carolyn Binder alongside alongside Bob Wood and Mark Bay getting set to bring the action to you and Bob I'll pose this question to you you watched the doubles play yesterday um, your thoughts on those finals moving into today with the singles final well I was very surprised at the uh, results in the doubles not not at uh, who, who won the, the matches but, but the sort of ease in which they were uh, contested uh, you know the number one seeds in the 16s won six one six two I believe it was and and then in the 18s uh, it was very similar and uh, you know that that surprised me a great deal I thought those matches would be much more competitive but but uh, kudos to the champions I mean they got the job done and uh, and and deserved to win now this is a totally different situation today I mean. Uh, you know, singles and doubles are just miles apart, and uh, 
I think, he, especially here with the 16s, I think if you watch the first few games and you're going to see a few errors uh, just b- based on the situation and the nerves and whatever. But but then they'll calm down and uh, we should be in for a very entertaining match. John McNally and Gianni Ross taking the 16 doubles yesterday. And Mark, your thoughts on the 18 doubles results in uh, Noah Ro- Rubin and Stefan Kozlov. They're making quite the scene on the international level. Yeah, no doubt. And I'd say that it was... It's not a surprise that Ruben and, and Kozlov win. They're excellent, great at returning. You know, Kozlov's amazing at the net. They've had a lot of experience in professionals. It was a bit of a surprise that they were able to successfully beat uh, Naden Ballman and Altamarino that easily. I think it was more the, the nature of the match and the fact that the you know Ballman and Altamarino weren't able to really do a good job of holding serve throughout that and, and that was the, the surprise yesterday that uh, doubles often can get to six four seven five seven six and they never got anywhere near that so congratulations to those guys and obviously best of luck to, to Noah later on in our, our boys 18 final. Mark talk a little bit about um, obviously we we see the conditioning and the conditioning not really an issue even at this level, the 16s level, but what it takes to get through the grind of this type of tournament day in and day out, especially when you're you're playing singles and doubles and uh, getting to this final weekend with the pressure that's on you at this point, just what it takes to prepare mentally and physically for this type of a match. Well, well both of these guys really have an advantage. Um, and it's it's an advantage based on parental lineage. You've got Johnny McNally's mom, Lynn McNally, who was formerly Lynn Neighbors, was an amazing player and, and an outstanding coach. And she actually made the drive here all the way from Alpharetta, Georgia. And interestingly enough, her daughter Katie McNally, John's sister, actually won the national championship, and she's in attendance today to root on her brother, which is a wonderful story in and of itself. But but there's a mother with a work ethic, coach wise, and then Connor Hans's dad, Ken is an actual coach and uh, the mother directs the South Bay Tennis Center so you have two families that are not just families they're intricately connected to the tennis and have you know sort of given these boys the pedigree and put them through the paces so I've talked to both boys and in, you in, know in McNally says he feels good Hans says he's a little sore but everything feels good and I think that uh, we're in for a great match. Connor Hans serving now to open the match love 15 there's a volley he won't miss in 35 minutes. He just didn't get, he hit that volley behind the service line. Love 30. Three unforced errors, love 40. Yeah, and it's always tricky to start out serving in a match of this magnitude at this age. I mean, this is not, you know, Federer or Isner or Rayonich coming out and, you know, they're going to hit two unreturnable serves and the other guy is not going to be able to touch a few balls. At this age, they usually have to play for the points and, and when the nerves and jitters hit, can actually affect the first shots and also the serve percentage. So you can see here he's not really been able to locate the first serve and hasn't been able to find. I mean, right now, more important than anything, whether he wins or loses this game, just just actually play a couple of points. Try to get into a few of the rallies and start getting your, your footing for the match. 15-40. Connor Hans opens the match with a service break, but again, that goes back to the nerves you guys touched on uh, for the nine seed and nerves to open the match for Connor Hans. Yeah, you know, when you're watching a 
high-level boys junior tennis, the early stages to me are a lot, the way they handle the nerves is are they willing to work and are they sort of building points versus checking out of points. I look at that and at this age that's rather significant so far between the two boys McNally at least in that last game the few opportunities that he had looked like he was trying to hit cross courts and build the points John McNally up a service break 1-0 <coughs> serving first set I think the start's a little bit more important for Hans, actually, than McNally, because McNally has, has actually been pretty battle-tested on the score, um, particularly having a challenge in that quarterfinal match where he was down, lost the first set, and was also down 4-11 in the third. Hans here, I think, because in their rivalry, I mean, if you recall in their rivalry, it's only been three matches, but McNally won pretty soundly last time. So if McNally can get off to a quick start, I think that'll be like he's doing right now. That'll be trickier for Hans psychologically. 40 love quickly now for the top seed, John McNally. So this is a rather important game here to see how McNally handles this next point. Had a chance to close it out quickly. Misses the first ball there now. How does he handle this? Goes for the big serve and delivers the goods on the ace. So clearly here, tail of two guys. One guy building points and making more first serves while the other guy was missing first serves and obviously missing some opportunity balls. An easy hold for the one seed on his serve, John McNally up. Two games to love. First set. Connor Hans comes back with an ace for himself. He definitely has a pretty big serve. He leads the ball into the court, tries to transfer his weight. It's a pretty good wrist snap on it. I was watching him in warm ups this morning. He was hitting some pretty big ones. But He's in pursuit of big free points on the serve in a boys 16 final. I'm not sure that's, that's the best way to go. Because now McNally gets an opportunity, as you can see, to jump on a second serve. And there's a pretty big disparity between the speed on Hans' first and second serve. So McNally will have a lot of opportunity to attack some seconds if this becomes his choice to go for a lot of big ones if he doesn't keep the percentages up. And this is a real important game for Connor Hans. I mean, if he goes down two breaks uh, real early, uh, that doesn't mean the set's over by any means, but, but he's dug himself quite a hole to get out of. 15-30. Yeah, it's well done. But McNally's willing, as you can see, he, he's initiating the very basic fundamental choice of hitting a cross court ground stroke. And he, uh, I think one of his strengths is the, the depth and the penetration and the quality of his routine rally ball. For his age, you know, he's already starting to sprout up a little bit in terms of height. He looks like he's about 5'11 now, and he's going to be getting much taller, as big as his dad is, who's clearly about 6'3 or so. I just think that that 
that discipline and willing to put the, the cross-court aspect of the match out first, and that's the first thing he's connected to. I think it's a smart way that he's come out to play this final. Connor Hans fights off a break point. One more to go, 30-40. A rare forehand error from John McNally. Fights both break points off. You don't see that very often. But great backhand down the line by Connor Hansen. Again, he's come from two break points down to having a game point in his favor. And at an at at early, early critical time. Yeah, let's see how this game plays out, though. He still needs to close the game. And there he closes it. See, that, that, that that's significant, you know, because in this rivalry with the fact that Hans has beaten him a couple of times, those that don't know, the, the Easter Bowl match that they played in the 14s was a really knockdown drag out final that Hans ended up winning. And... Um, saving some match points there and so McNally for sure is capable of coming out and being a front runner but in the back of his mind he knows that he's had a, some battles with this guy before so that that two one to three low love difference is substantial right now. Connor Hans fights back from a couple of break points down for the all-important hold. Statement served with the service ace to close the game and he's still down a service break but just one. One, two, opening set, and the top seed will serve with the service break coming up. And Connor Hans right up off the bench, a couple of swigs of water, and he's back at it. Yeah, well, that's a, it, it's amazing what uh, winning a game will do to your body language. <laughs> he's uh, feeling a little better. Well, everybody wants to get on the board. It doesn't matter what sport you are. You're a baseball player, you want to get on base. You're a basketball player, you want to hit your first jumper. You're a football player, you want to start getting some first downs. I mean, it's, it's these baby steps that start the progression to being able to earn a victory in any sport. And, and what was big about that was that Hans, A, got a serve in, B, pressure performed on an offensive shot, too. So he delivered the goods on a couple of offensive shots, and, and that's going to be important for him going throughout. 15 love and the service games on both sides of the court starting to wake up here a little bit. That's McNally's second ace of the match. <coughs> Thirty love. That's always a different dynamic for these young boys. You notice Hans was actually putting his finger up as if in a match situation he would have called that ball out. Kalamazoo Championship match here. Full line crews. We have line crews on every line. Full ball boys. This is exactly no different than any U.S. Open professional match. Forty love. So you have to give McNally credit. He showed almost no body language as he lost that last game came right back out. He actually sat down a little longer in the changeover. And he's come out here and he's put on a couple more first serves. I mean, his serve percentage is well into the 70s right now as the match is this young. But to me, he's just making a lot of, of good competitive percentage statements for the match. A rare double fault for John McNally. And it's 40-15. This is his first of the match. Yeah, I don't, you know, obviously there's no such thing as a good time for a double fall. On the scoreboard, you say that's a good time for a double fall. For me, I, I don't like the idea that he's getting game points and losing them because it's something that obviously can shift momentum. So good job there getting that first serve in and closing out that game. Spinning serve for John McNally out of the reach of Connor Hans. Another service hold for the top seed. Now 3-1 opening set.
This is becoming a little bit of an ace contest here. <laughs> That's his third ace in the last two surface games. I mean, I, I started out at the outset saying that, that this isn't Isner and Rayanich, but, you know, I, maybe I deserve to offer some apologies. Chitima. Forehand error by John McNally, 30 love. Well Te done. Textbook tennis there, Mark. Well, you know, smart. I mean, hands sort of dared him. He didn't really come in on a great approach shot. He sort of snuck in there, and McNally did a nice job of reading his body language and playing the lob up over the backhand side. So good tactical choice by McNally and a great close quickly to finish off the point. 30-15. Well, this is the second foot fault that's been called. Usually the player should ask which foot and start trying to make some adjustments because that's... something you mentally don't want to worry about when you're trying to play. Most abused rule in the game of tennis at, at my level, the high school level and whatever, many, many kids foot fault and very rarely is it called because they just don't have enough officials at sites to to call it, but it's it's called here. It's one play. Well constructed point for Connor Hance. Now two three opening set. And moving up through the, the ranks for these kids is foot fault something that's concentrated? I mean, it's a fundamental part of the game. It's like you're double dribbling in basketball or traveling in basketball or, you know, whatever you have it. If it's not called early on, it's easy to kind of get away from it. Yeah, I agree. During the changeover, let's turn it over to the PA as... More awards being handed out here. It's final Sunday at the USTA National Boys 18 and 16 Championships. Awards being handed out. The feed ins champion is William Jennison, the 12th seed coming into this tournament from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the feed ins runner up, Kyle Selig, the 31 seed out of Hatfield, Pennsylvania. So those awards being handed out over near court two as we move along through the first set of the 16 singles championship. It's the top seed, John McNally, with a three games to two opening set lead over Connor Hans. And McNally has kept up. He started off each one of these games with the slice serve out wide. And so far he's been successful every time. I think that Hans will have to start trying to take that particular serve away from him.
big ball. McNally painting the baseline there. Right. right on the line. Well, it marks the first time that McNally's taken a first ball and gone behind hands. He's actually intentionally gone cross court to build the points all match, and now into the sixth game, he offers a little variety there. Thirty fifteen. Yeah, that was an example where he was rushed and he should have definitely gone cross court, so that wasn't a good time for him to actually go for the direction change. Break point. First real test here for John McNally. Well, you know, what's happened is Hans has actually done a nice job from behind with a couple of his service games. So he's starting to gain some momentum from behind and playing a bit of a dark horse role in the set. This is the first game where you see a couple of unforced errors uh, from John. Yeah, that's, that's pretty pretty gutsy. You know, he double faulted on that same serve earlier on the, on the last service game on the other side. So he nails the second serve with a little bit of slice action down the tee and jumps on the short ball and hits a winner and really held it to the last minute. And Hans had to guess. Guessed wrong. Winner for McNally. Break point saved. Break point is saved to deuce. Painted the baseline again. Well, that, that's a good opportunity, though. He's standing there. His feet are set. The ball's in his strike zone. He has time. He can transfer his weight. That's a good time to pull the trigger. You know, earlier in the game, he missed one, and it just looked like he won at the point without, you know, sort of willing to, to, to work and earn position. Well, he's not missing these by much. He's, he's missing a bunch of serves by a small margin, but nonetheless... Every time that there's a little bit of a, a fault, there's actually a mini momentum shift and an opportunity for the opponent to attack. From break point to game point, now to deuce. Great serve, wide. Yeah, he he's won every single time he's gone out there with that one. So that is part of his winning formula today for sure. See what he does here. Great wheels. Great wheels. 
Yeah, it's big time speed there. You know, McNally did a nice job opening up the court with the forehand and then following up with the backhand. The challenge sometimes is that McNally hits the ball deep and penetrating. In that instance, he didn't pull it wide enough. So by the time he snuck in, he had to volley up and hands came back. And there's, <laughs> there's number six on the free point wide. But, I mean, again, credit to Hans there. He showed us some major league speed out of that corner. I mean, he really turned on the Jets there. A lot of kids would have given up on that point. Game point now for John McNally. It was a battle, but McNally holds. Now 4-2 opening set. And more important, you know, as, as you start playing a set like this, you get a lead, and as you start sort of having the lead, there's more responsibility placed on your shoulders for closing out the set. And then you could see a little bit more of that, that anxiety and, and McNally in terms of trying to close out that game. Connor Hance serving now down 2-4, first set. Fifteen love. Obviously, I you know I'm from the Midwest section, from Chicago, and own an academy there, and I I spend a lot of time watching the junior tennis, so I'm quite familiar with both of these boys and McNally. I've seen a lot this year, and you know, it's just relative to his average level. McNally is He's not hitting nearly as big off the ground as he's capable of or normal. Obviously, this is a big moment, so he's, you know, trying to play smarter and more measured what he's doing. But his his upper level gear could actually push Hans a little bit more. But I think that the the gear that he's playing at now, hitting the pace, I think Hans likes that and will enjoy sort of being the antagonist and and daring John to, to put him away. Thirty love now. Forty love. And credit to Hans continuing to come forward. I mean, the very first attempt he came in the first game when he lost a serve, you know, he missed the volley, and you know he's stuck with it. He's made a consistent effort to come forward. I, I like the courage there. Wow, that's the third one. He, he starts off with his feet pretty closed off to the court, almost like a semi-modified, old-school John McEnroe type of stance. And then he puts his feet together and pushes in. McNally couldn't get the roll off the top of the net, and Connor Hans holds. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think McNally needs to reposition himself. I think the second serves are landing much shorter and he's too far away from where he needs to be to start attacking the second serve. Carolyn Binder alongside Bob Wood and Mark Bay bringing you the 16 singles final round and once again we will turn it over to the PA system for more awards to be handed out.
<laughs> Back to action at center court from Stowe Stadium on Public Media Network and USTAboys.com. Another nice feature of this final Sunday is in between the changeovers, the uh, other awards being handed out. They give the Sportsmanship Award for the 16 feed-ins to the 31 seed Kyle Selig. And guys, it's uh, always in the back of the minds, I'm sure, of the athletes, but sportsmanship, a very important part of this game, and it's great to see the kids being recognized. And it's been outstanding this year. Uh, there have been a few code violations and stuff like that given out during the 10-day period, but for the most part, I think the sportsmanship has been uh, excellent. Uh, sportsmanship is rather important. I love uh, the, the quote by Federer when he says it's nice to be important but much more important to be nice and you know when the top players obviously if you look at you know how gracious Rafa is and how all the top guys are handling themselves now hopefully that bleeds down to all these young up and comers 30 love now John McNally serving up for three opening set McNally still doing more damage with the serve to the forehand clearly you know he's connected to something and is using it to his advantage I mean, he is right he's now at nine free points on that one area as you play a junior te junior tennis match you're probably trying to put together about 60 points I mean mathematically two sets is only 48 24 points each but usually with deuces and tiebreakers and things that go on and you usually get to about 60 points to win and the question is how do you get it are you getting with rallying offense serving returning you know Earning points in different types of bunches. Forty fifteen. Here we see again John McNally a situation where he's got to close the door and he gives up a point back to Connor Hand. Yeah, yeah. He's getting a lot of forty loves and forty fifteens and then losing those points. Right now he has the scoreboard in his favor, but over the course of time it, it sends the subliminal message to your opponent: Hey, you know it's game point for me, but you still have a chance. That ball there, McNally hit. I, I like that ball a little bit better. I'm not sure if he meant it or he shanked it a little bit, but the ball bounced and kicked up and had a little bit of extra on it. You know, it had some more spin and power. It was a combination ball. Sometimes John can, can really pound him. He's got great, you know, basics on this ground stroke, so he hits the ball well, but sometimes the players that play him sort of like to feed off of that pace. I think that, uh, that that's important that he, he looks to mix up the heights on his ground strokes and not just play at one speed. John McNally holds now a 5-3 opening set and a must-hold situation now on the other side for the nine seed, Connor Hans. And John McNally broke him in the very first game of the match. One of the times where your serve is broken the most, but one of the three times, I think. But anyway... Very first game, and then he's just held serve. Oh, he's staying up by two games if he does that. Yeah, the, the drop shot choice there. I, you know, I can't say that he wasn't in a bad position to try it. I don't think that McNally was deep in the court, though. John would have gotten that with ease. So. Hans really needs to think about what he wants to do here. Should be organized with his choices. 15 0. Thirty fifteen.
Good footwork there by McNally. Hit the first shot, got the opportunity ball, and was rather light on his feet as he moved up. And I thought, took good care of that ball. Didn't overplay it. Sometimes the young boys come up on those, and they try to do too much with it. Hit it too big for the situation. I thought he played a nice speed on that winner. 30 all now. Forty thirty. Let's go. Connor Hans holding tough here. When he had to have a service hold, he got one done. And now he's got to do something he hasn't done in this set yet, and that's break McNally to stay in this first set. John McNally, the top seed, leading Connor Hans five games to four opening set. We'll once again turn it over to the PA for more awards presentations here on Final Sunday. Carolyn Binder alongside Bob Wood and Mark Bay bringing you continued coverage of the 16 singles final round here from Acker Court on the campus of Kalamazoo College in Stowe Stadium awarding the third and fourth place in the 16 singles. Gianni Ross of Burr Ridge, Illinois, the four seed taking third place and what a great story in Oliver Crawford placing fourth unseated from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Yeah, both of those guys are playing at a really high level. It was nice to watch some of that match this morning. Gianni, uh, coming from Chicago, developed by Jack Sharp as a young boy, and he's working a lot with Robbie Poole now in Chicago. Congratulations to the whole family there. And Oliver, great, great um, unseated player run here. One of the few times that happens in an event of this magnitude. And congrats to his, his family. And uh, actually, some work with Kelly Jones. Looks like it's been paying off down there in that area. And it's... He has an exceptional net game for, for a boy that age. It was nice to watch him this morning. John McNally now serving for the first set down love 15. What kind of move was that just to be able to pull that off and poise at the net there for McNally? Yeah, that's always a dangerous move. I, I call it the the, the no-look uh, Michael Jackson 360 volley. And, uh, you know, guys like to hit that one. And Johnny actually hit it well because he had enough width to keep it away from Hans's speed. 15 off. And that was one of the few times where Hans actually was able to move out and return the wide serve. He's waiting on it now, and so McNally will have some interesting choices as he picks and chooses whether he wants to go into the body or wide or to the forehand with some of these serves to close out the set. Forty fifteen now to set points on the racket of John McNally. So he sticks with it there. And I think what's happening a little bit is that Hans's wrist sort of turns downward a little bit. It doesn't get enough of the bat on the ball. So he's 
He's actually struggling with the hard ones and the wide ones like this. So he's giving up short balls as a result, and John's able to take advantage of that. That time, McNally closing the door, taking the first set 6-4. And guys, your thoughts on this first set, the way it played out, it was really that first service break John McNally got, got right out of the gate that made all the difference for him. Well, and, and you know, as I mentioned earlier, the, <clears throat> the first game is a, a sort of a tough game to serve, and and uh, and John broke him, and then he just uh, took care of business and uh, served extremely well, and and uh, just went right through the first set, uh, winning it six games to four. I'm impressed by both guys, actually. I'm impressed with Hans because he had one of those starts that could quickly have gotten away from him and been like a train wreck, like a 4051 type of start. And he was able to turn that 02 break points down into a hold and then con continued holding. So now he's making the right statements for his game. Uh, hey, he loses the set, but still he right now knows that he sort of spotted Johnny that lead and now he can start off this next set as the person that's serving with the opportunity to, to be ahead and make McNally serve at 01 and 1 2 and make the score psychologically flip in this match. So I'm impressed with Hans' speed and his competitiveness, and I'm impressed with McNally because he's kept it simple and he's found something that worked. He's serving forehand, taking the opportunity ball, and either building points or finishing points if it's sitting there. And he hasn't really deviated from that, and he was doing it to the tune of consistent holding. And, and as we all know, watching a bunch of 16 and under tennis, there's often a lot of breaks. This was a lot of holds by our number one seed and shows a lot of poise here in a championship situation. So actually, you know, I'm impressed with both guys and I'm excited to see what's going to happen here in the second set. Carolyn Binder alongside Bob Wood and Mark Bay. Glad to have you with us on Public Media Network locally in Kalamazoo and around the world on USTAboys.com and our continued gratitude to CCAN Technologies for partnering with us to provide that technology this year. It'll be Connor Hans, the nine seed, after dropping the first set four six to serve and open the second. And I like the attitude there by Hans. I mean, he's not behaving like a guy that just lost a set in a national championship match. Got the point started, jumped on the first ball, came forward, positive body language. That's the behavioral pattern you need to have. Followed by an ace. You know, it, it, it's it's an attitude thing sometimes in the sport of tennis. And, you know, you, you feel that you know, a set is important because it's tangible. You need to have one of them. You need to have another one of them to win. So when you lose it, it should be a significant moment. But it's so important to try to win the first game of the next set for McNally because he wants to reestablish the scoreboard for Hans to say hey you know what we're going to be out here for a while Hans quickly up 30 love and that was his fourth ace of the match so far <laughs> 40 love now and an early chance for Connor Hans the nine seed to shut the door on this first game Easy hold for the nine seed, Connor Hans, to open the second set. One game to love, and you talked about the positive body language. More of that coming off the nine seed here to open the second set. Yeah, I mean, he's got his chest out. He's got the, the, the right attitude, the, the walk. He's walking the walk. I just I appreciate it the way he handled losing that set. And it's not a surprise that he comes out and holds in that manner. So he puts the pressure back on McNally, even though McNally's up a set. Does he continue to have that holding serve formula, or does McNally have to find different ways to win? Does, does Hans shut down this this glaring area of serve to, you know, to the forehand? I mean, you know, that's probably one of the more important storylines really here in the second set. 
Our first look now at John McNally's service game here in the second down 0-1. Boy, Hans is just pumping himself up and staying positive. And, you know, how important is that? Because especially after you lose the first set, most most kids get sort of on a little bit of a downer and whatever, and he's just upbeat as can be. Yeah, I, I think that uh, because of the moment, both guys were rather measured there in the first set. I won't be surprised at all if, if this really heats up, if the, if the ball striking and the, the shot quality off the ground raises for both players. 15 off. So there's the magic elixir. Hans gets it back and hustles, but McNally puts together that one-two combo. It's just so important at, at this age to not and I, I've been here calling these finals you know only since 2007 but I've watched you know a bunch of these now and there's not a lot of organization sometimes with the 16 and under service games and today I, I just I feel like John has that 30-15 Very good tennis there. Outstanding ground strokes by both players. But, but McNally there showed you a lot more. He, he hit in front, he hit behind, he used the slice tool. He hasn't really used the slice much. I mean, he knifed three slices perfectly like he had been doing in all match. Just a wonderful display of total skills in this game there. And now he gets the free point he was looking for, and he's able to hold in a rather important game because Hans was coming on momentum-wise a bit there, and McNally was able to hold him off with a really well-played game. John McNally holds to pull even at one all, second set. Connor Hans to serve. challenges I'm seeing with Hans's first serve is that he's, he's chasing the toss quite a bit to the right. It's taken away a little bit of his effectiveness. He's getting a fair amount of disguise because of, of his hip turn, his body being coiled, but in some instances, particularly here on the deuce side, because we're sitting right above him, I'm seeing him chase the toss quite a bit. 15 love. So what that makes uh, the second serve potentially can sit up a little more because you're like that sitting up there. He, John could possibly attack that. Thirty love. Kind of looks up a little bit at mom there. She's sitting up top with uh, sister Katie. Congratulations to Katie Mac. She is a national champion in girls 14s and it's number one in the nation. And I'm just not sure. I don't have the, the data or the history on this to, to think that there's a brother and a sister both ranked number one in the United States at the same time. I'm not sure if that's happened. And definitely uh, the, the potential of, of uh, two national champions in the same household in the same week. I'm not sure that has ever happened as well in tennis. So this could be a, a history-making match uh, for the McNally family today. Can't beat that pedigree, huh, Bob? Yeah, I guess. 40 love. Well, if I'm John, I don't know if I want to come to the dinner table tonight if I don't get this one done. Tried for the Sports Center top 10 play there between the legs. Yeah. And he had time to make that one, actually. He could have he actually made that one, but the speed of the hands to get that other ball, that drop volley, 
It was very good. It was not a bad drop volley. And Hans is making these shots look like their routine with, with his wheel. So I'm actually just consistently impressed with his willingness to scramble and, more importantly, how well he's executing the balls on the run. Connor Hans holds once again here in the second set, takes a two games to one. Second set lead, down a set though to the top seed, John McNally, as we continue our coverage from final Sunday. Carolyn Binder alongside Bob Wood and Mark Bay. Glad you're with us from George Acker Court at Stowe Stadium on the campus of Kalamazoo College. And it's a party up here, guys. Mark Riley, the tournament director, looking over final Sunday here. A beautiful day for finals tennis. And let's look ahead for a moment during the changeover to the 18 singles final. Colin Altamirano, the story of last year's tournament. Now the five seed will face Noah Rubin, who is uh, looking to kind of overcome some obstacles that he's had in the past years. His first appearance here in the finals in Kalamazoo. And, and you know, for some reason, and I obviously could be wrong, I think. Uh, I just think it's Ruben's time. You know, he, he sort of paid his dues the last few years, and, uh, and but who knows? It should be a great match. We'll have that for you at the conclusion of this 16s final. Now it's John McNally serving down 1-2, second set. Just missed there. Again, McNally's misses have not been much, but right now this is this is a scoreboard game he's playing. He's got to really keep executing because you know even though he's, he went for a tweener, he was in a bad position. You know he sort of let the end of that game go by, and now he's down love 15. I mean he's up a set, but he's one two. Like I said before, it's a different psychology serving from behind, trying to hold from behind. So now he's at love 15 second serve, and again it's. It just keeps mounting. Now hands makes them play the point. Now they have to grind it out. There's the big forehand, defense, big forehand, defense, big forehand, defense, great backhand, defense, big forehand, lefty defense. And this is just absurd right now. Look what it takes to actually have to win a point now in that particular situation, but that's because now you have an inspired competitor on the other side. And I haven't seen that in quite a while. I mean, he actually returned the ball with his left hand. Maria Sharapova does it all the time. Truth be told, technically, all the kids that have great two-hand backhands learn how to hit left-handed forehand. So, so most children actually have the prowess to do it. They just would seldom try it because they, unless they're in an uncompromising position, they're hot-dogging. 15 off. He goes back there's to the well. There's another There's another one left yeah, in the well. Wide serve. I mean, if I'm Connor Hans, I stand in a normal position. The moment the toss goes up, I'm just cutting over there. He's going to have to ace me down the tee a few times before you know I let him continue to earn points in that manner. Forty-fifteen now. So far, it's to me the the handling of the moment has, has been a, you know a better job collectively by McNally, but Hans is starting to make some more pressure responses. He's, he's sort of questioning McNally. Hey, man, are you going to execute? Are you going to be good for this long? And, and so far, John's answered the bell. Missed that one. 40 30. Sort of tried to guide that ball, and then the wind took it. He should have moved up and just closed on that ball. Moved up and crushed that ground stroke with some spin. Kind of backed off of it and didn't hit it with any conviction. Wind took it. 50. And as you can see here, that's how McNally plays. That's his best tennis. When he's producing and generating, his mother hits the tar out of the ball. His sister hits the tar out of the ball. He has to hit it, too. Got to bring it every time because that's that's what's gotten you here. Hold for the top seed, John McNally. Now two all second set and up a set on Connor Hans in his 16 singles final. 
talking with uh, Midwest Coaching Commission Coach Mark Faber, who's coached uh, John McNally in the intersectional team competition. He he felt that that Hans really did a nice job of using the energy from the Southern Cal team and also competing well. And felt that McNally didn't take advantage of the low second serve percentage that that Hans had that day, and McNally didn't mix up his game enough. And so far. Uh, I think McNally's learned a little bit from that particular loss. And I think that, you know, having a coach like Mark Faber there helping Johnny through that loss, which incidentally is his only junior loss of the year, Johnny rebounded and then obviously beat hands at the clay courts two and three after that particular experience. So great to have those team experiences with a coach on the court for some of the up-and-coming juniors. Love now. Now I feel that Hans has been holding serve not as much with free points on the serve. I think it's been ground stroke discipline mistakes by McNally. McNally is his concentration level on his serve has been an A minus, but I think on Hans's serve now it's dropped down to about a C plus. He's been missing a few. This is a better point there from him, but he needs to make sure that he has that yeoman work ethic on hands is served there and because when you when you allow a guy to hold sometimes easily it comes back to to bite you later on it just gives them that passion to com compete harder on your serve 40 15 Holds minimal tests from the top seed there, John McNally. Yeah, Hans is, is doing a nice job now, you know, after that early stage mm -hmm. of identifying that his holding serve formula is maybe an occasional free point, but getting the point started and just sort of fighting. Carolyn Binder alongside Bob Wood and Mark Bay. Well, final Sunday from Stowe Stadium on PMN and USTAboys.com. At this time, we'll turn it back over to the PA for more awards presentation. to action on George Acker Court Center Court at Stowe Stadium, Carolyn Binder, alongside Bob Wood and Mark Bay on Public Media Network and USTABoys.com, handing out the awards for third and fourth place in the 18 singles division. And it's Stefan Kozloff taking third place, Michael Moe taking fourth. Michael Moe, another good story, defeating the two-seed Ernesto Escobedo earlier this week and then ran into Noah Rubin on his way to fourth place here in the 18 singles. Nice job there. So McNally picks up where he left off. I mean, rather focused and disciplined. He just has a, a purpose on his serve game that he needs to 
sort of connect on his return game as well. I feel uh, McNally right now is serving on the side where the sun is not in your eye. So this is a side that's a little easier when you're looking up this time of day. You don't have to deal with that momentary glare of blindness that you get sometimes on the first shot. John McNally has not had his serve broken all day long. He's faced only one break point in a set and a half. Yeah, he's done a great job. It's just that you know he's been right at the moment of truth in a match like this in a big final, Easter Bowl final. Was, it was a big moment there and was not able to close the door. So this is important for him to keep on pushing until the job's done. As you can see here, Hans does not give up on anything. Hans's wheels are just incredible. <laughs> but I appreciate the fact that McNally is using the wind a little bit, like I said before, not just sort of trying to penetrate every shot and hit for length. He's trying to hit for some height, trying to hit for some width, tying together his net game, like we mentioned before, doubles champion yesterday. So that's a good return there. And that's why I think that he, he needs to be careful. You know, it, it's just it's so easy up here from the booth to make the decision like that. But when is a good time to go into the body on the backhand and also use the kicker backhand to mix up and complement the, the serve area that's been giving him so many points? Because as you get later in the match and, and you want the points in the game's bad, if the other guy is cutting it off and not letting you win, sometimes you feel like you're working harder than you want to. That's a good time to go into the body there. Gee, that's much better. I, there he went into the body and said, you know what, I'm willing to work for the point. He explored height first, then he broke in with the backhand angle, then he went backhand direction change. He showed you three different looks all within one point. But more importantly, he's willing to work for the point instead of just trying to get the instant gratification and, and sort of get out of the game. 40-30. And there it is. He goes backhand twice on important points there, and he needed to do that. He needed to sit. He still may have a steady diet of serving in the forehand, but he's got to let the guy know that the other ones are possible, and that's pretty much why he got that free point. I guarantee you Hans was sitting there waiting on forehand there, and that caught him by surprise at a big time. Bob mentioned he had not been broken. McNally had not been broken in a set and a half. Still has that record in three all in the second set. Connor Hans getting set to serve. Big game here for Connor Hans because... Uh should he be broken here? Well, I don't want to jinx him. They, they say this is a, a key game, Bob. Uh, how do you feel after all your years of being involved with tennis? You feel about the, the notion that, that the seventh game is the most crucial game of a set. People say that a lot. I've heard that a lot. Well, what's your I've, feeling about I've that? I've even heard the third point of the seventh game. Okay. So, <laughs> so, 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 so but how do you so, feel about that with your experience well, of watching so much tennis on the call all these years? I, uh, I think there's a little bit of truth to that. I mean, that that seventh game at uh, at uh, you know three three all and uh, I mean it's a it's a big point in a set. I I would feel thirty love. McNally was not able to win two of the first three points to set himself up for a possible break. So, so Connor Hans is in a pretty strong position here. That was a double fall, but that, that's what I'm talking about. He's chasing the toss just a bit too far on this deuce side serve. He's hit a couple of nice T-serves as a result of it, but yeah, a little bit of a crosswind blowing to his right right now, and it just seems like that that's throwing off things. For what it's worth, that was the third point of this game, 
Here he comes. And at this point of the match, McNally has yet to really, with the exception of the one lob, have great defense. When Hans has come forward, Hans has been able to get the majority of these points, and I just I feel like there McNally had a good shot at that, but I don't think he was thinking two-time passing. He overran that ball and hit it too flat. He needs to be thinking about making it more challenging right now, particularly dipping a pass down and putting a lob up. Hans has the sun in his eye right now. 40-15. So that's a little bit better. He gets the chip down at his feet, makes him volley up, and then with the time, then he goes by him. It's, it's, a, it's a combination concept you have to have when players are coming forward. 40-30. Uh. Connor Hans holds. That was important for him, and he gets the job done. It's a good play by McNally. He made the right move. Just as a bit of that crosswind blowing to the right, he didn't factor that in. He hasn't made a lot of transitions at the net, so he hasn't had a lot of volleys where he's, he's had to adjust and feel how much effort it takes to get the balls to the corners. So with that lack of, of repetition volume in the match, it's easy for him to miss that one. He'll learn from that one and make the next one, but unfortunately that causes uh, a loss of point, a loss of game, so hands holds again. And now more importantly, this is a big boy set, folks. Yeah. Seven straight holds. Yep. Carolyn Binder alongside Bob Wood and Mark Bay. Glad to have you with us on Public Media Network and USTAboys.com for continuing coverage of final Saturday, starting with the 16 singles bracket, and it's the nine seed, Connor Hans up 4-3, seven straight holds, as Mark mentioned in the second set. John McNally took the first set 6-4, and at the conclusion of this match, we will bring you the highly anticipated 18 singles final match between the five seed Colin Altamirano and the three seed Noah Rubin. These two, that should be a, a battle for certain. And, and uh, Colin Altamirano is attempting to win 18 championships back to back. That doesn't happen very often. Yeah, it really doesn't. And, you know, there's a lot of respect beginning of this week. On, on Jared Donaldson and what an amazing summer he's had winning a couple of futures and just unfortunate that he had an abdominal injury that caused him to retire actually leading in the first set but uh, Altamirano has just been consummate and battler and worked his way through and now in position to try to win two in a row so it definitely will be an intriguing matchup today Love 15 Connor Hans can win one of the next two points, he will put himself in position to possibly break, break serve and take a commanding lead. So that was bad luck. So what happened there, McNally had a good look at a forehand, crushed it, and didn't make the net appearance. He was gun shy, and, and he's been sort of you know, in and out on that some this year where he's committed to coming forward or staying back. The, the ground stroking is what's won so much for him, but the net is what he needs to kind of probably keep doing to have his game develop. And he turned his back on the net appearance, came later, but did not hurt Hans as much. Hans ended up stealing that point on the defense there. He's obviously won multiple points here with his hustle and his speed, and that's part of McNally's head now. He wins both of the next two yeah. points. He's in, he's in real good shape. Yeah, big moments now.
big moments here because Hans has been just waiting for an opportunity like this all match. And now McNally goes for the serve to the forehand, no surprise, but Hans is waiting on it. And now second serve, love 40. There it is. At this stage, you have to just say, you know what? One point at a time. You have to block out the score. Forget about the 6-4 for you. Forget about the 4-3 for him. Just play this point. Stay in the present and try to fight your way back to Deuce because there's a ton of momentum you know, relative to the history of their matches on this particular game. 15-40. Right on the line. Right on the line. Right on the line. Janice Lumpkin from Naperville, Illinois on that line. Rather experienced referee. Her daughter, Elizabeth Lumpkin, was a great national champion. Part of the UCLA. Amazing teams they've had. Championship to the UCLA Bruins on the women's side this year. Janice continues to uh, be a line umpire. 30-40. See there, I... I don't think I would have gone for the big one there. I would have wanted to play that first shot on my turns. So now this is going to see what McNally's made of here. Initiates the cross court, goes inside in, and he goes out Ah, he gives a little, gives a little foreign language yield. And a little nod to Colin Altamirano, but, but, though. But, That's his signature. But 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 the point is that he rolled up his sleeves and he was willing to get dirty and work for it and that's important because because Hans has been winning a lot of rallies on his serve that are extended points where McNally has been beating himself so key moments here back to Deuce and he's back behind him again so now McNally's going for the serve to the forehand. Hans is getting it back now. He's having to work harder now. But going behind fast players is always a smart choice. And in this particular instance, the crosswind's blowing out to that corner. That's an area where you can get some more winners if you can connect on it. Hold point now for John McNally. Much better defense by wow. McNally. What a turnaround there for well, John McNally on that down service low game. 40 and he won five straight points. And because you've been holding the entire time, you feel like, you know, I can hold this time. He hasn't had the demons that he's lost to serve yet. You know, until you officially get broken, you haven't been broken. And he took a wonderful competitive attitude there. He, he fought for the points. He worked the points. And even though he had to play some second serve tennis there, was able to prevail. Connor Hans serving now for all second set. And this is one of those swing times here where it looked like all of a sudden Hans could have maybe had a chance to try to split. This is one of those instances where if Hans, if Hans doesn't be careful here, this could swing and be one of those four and four and outs. You know, he really needs to settle down here. He went for a down the line backhand. Crosswind may have blown it just a bit out. Love 15. And the race is it right there. Well, he has a lot of disguise on. It's it's hard to read where it's going. You know, I I, I can see why on the do side he has a little bit more of a challenge with the percentages and the ad side because the ad side he's kind of coming into balance here he's sort of tossing it away from himself to the right and chasing the ball and trying to catch up with it and that's that routine mistake that I think McNally's been making on Hans's service game that he needs to avoid 
because I think that that's the supplying hands with enough confidence to believe that he can just play an even ground stroke level on his service game and that'll be good enough. 30 all. Yeah, th that, that type of point is the one I think that McNally, if he was smart, would play here. I would play just the closest I, I had to a David Ferrer or a Djokovic type of style right now. Just, just competing, hustling, making balls, making it difficult for the other guy, refusing to miss. If something's really open, then take it and put it away. But just, just competing like a dog right here. Just don't allow your opponent to to hold easy late in the set. Well, John's telling himself that he should have gone inside in. I, I think he could have gone either way. I just think he overshot that unnecessarily. Didn't need to do so much with that ball. 40-30. Stare from hands. Having that situation, you need to settle down and play a discipline point. That's there was no real reason for that direction change. Break point now for Connor Hans. Back to Deuce. Trying to paint the line. <laughs> yeah, that was that was big time because there I I thought that McNally was starting to get some some momentum, some stroke momentum. He was starting to produce the ball, move the ball around. Hands comes up with the goods there again. You know, sports is always going to be determined by pressure performance when it matters. Here comes Hands. And McNally's got the answer. Great two-time passing there. Back to Deuce. Yeah, Hans has, has come in on a couple of those daring approach shots where it really hasn't been the, the best approach shot or the deepest. I like to suggest that the approacher should make the passing shot player uncomfortable. I like to use that word a lot in my coaching when they're coming. I, I don't feel McNally was uncomfortable there. I think he settled in and picked him apart there. Back to Deuce. Played by McNally. Well played. Great point. Not a good drop shot choice there by Hans, but you could see how the crosswind is really affecting the points. It's blowing the Hans's left and McNally's right, and it really helped McNally on that one backhand to gain control of the point when he was sort of getting run around. Critical moments here now. Uh, break point.
Yeah, he knows, knows better there. He knows that should have been cross court and high and heavy. It should have been nowhere near a mistake. He had plenty of time. Back to Deuce. Just long. Break point again for John McNally. Yeah, this is becoming one of those ultimate tease games on both sides, you know. Hans has some chances last game. Both guys have some chances this game. Foot fault and a fault. A double. That's a double. That's a double fault. <laughs> no, it's not a double fault. They, they don't double up there. But Hans, yeah, he's been struggling with that. A little bit of balance issue there as his feet are trying to push off. Good second serve. And he goes for a big shot there. I am absolutely amazed that that was his choice there. And now the top seed with a five games to four second set lead already up a set. And gentlemen, the psychological mindset of these two as they head to the changeover. Well, first of all, this is the hardest game to win. Uh, but, uh, of course, McNally's been here many times before. and and uh, But don't be surprised if uh, Hans uh, breaks him here. Well, I, I I don't go either way with the superstition or the belief. I'm just calling what I see. But I, I think that the nice thing is that, you know, Hans has been in a lot of situations before. He's got two goal balls and singles. 14s Easter Bowl and 12s play, so he's won the big. He's won the big match before, so that that's a good experience. That that's a teacher. This is McNally's sixth time in a national final, so these guys are not short on being in national finals before and against one another in national finals. So, I think the experience is there. I think it's going to come down more to execution um, than the willy nillies, if you will. But I think that uh, the training back at home. I mean, look at the Eric Basica um, back at the. South Bay Tennis Center, as well as his dad, Ken Hans, training, and, and obviously mother, director Courtney there. have done everything they can to get him ready to, to this moment. And obviously um, John McNally with, with mom, Lynn, and, you know, legendary coach John Cook, who's here, 76 years old, out there working on John's head this morning, as well as Will Lofgren, work from the Queen City Tennis Club, so Harper's Point in Queen City. has been a lot of work done to get both of these guys to this moment. And, you know, right now it's, it's about the execution of it. So we'll, we'll see how uh, Johnny McNally goes. Can he hold out? John McNally serving now for the championship. And again, he goes with a nice high heavy ball to set up an opportunity ball that he used with some roll. So he took the forehand, got it out of Hans' strike zone, then took another forehand and ran him with the crosswind. Just a great win usage combo. Now back behind him again. A drop shot choice. And I honestly, <laughs> it's just one of those where you go, no, no, no. Great shot. Great shot. Yeah. Right. You know, right. I said this, I was in Vancouver calling a lot of pro matches last week. 100K up there, and I saw Marcos Bagdadis win the tournament hitting that drop shot. And you're, it's only one of two things. You're either a genius or an idiot on the drop shot. And that was pure genius for McNally, and now two points away. 30 look. But Hans sticking around. Yeah, falling backwards there. That's not a good error by McNally. He should just stay on the point in that situation. You don't want to give anything free in this instance. But just pure numbers, statistics, the guy that wins that first point on a closeout game wins a lot more often. 30 all. We're really close to Hans, and, and he's saying to himself, come on, let's go fight. He's, he's giving himself the pep talk here. And now with two, you know, I mean, clearly McNally goes for that drop shot, is marveled by it, but now he's followed it up with two unforced errors on the four, and he really needs to take some time here. So the question is, Bob, does he go for the wide serve? Oh, he goes T. 
Hey, let's get it back. Hard to believe. He goes for the mix serve, hits it well. Hans yep. is all over it. They get him to the point exactly where Hans wants him, and he just nets a routine forehand there. That was a little bit of a tight miss. Championship point. He's like a big first serve right here. <laughs> he goes for it, but honestly, seldom goes in in that situation. <laughs> Always comes down to this, and oh, yeah, I just I prefer to just kick that serve in in that instance and play the point. You know, he's got a lot of good information. He's got the win to help him. He's got a lot of reasons why he can close that out. It's just, just such a double-edged sword when you do that. See how he responds. Back to Deuce. Is that wide, Carolyn? If it caught paint, it just barely caught paint. Called good. Yeah, that's, that's a real tough one. It was right in front oh, of us, wow. and you can you can see the mark there. It's. I mean, I don't have the best angle. At yeah, that, but it's, it's sure what they say. Me. They say in the sport, 99% uh, out is still 100% in, and it must have been the case there. What do you say here, Mark? Kick it in and play the point? Absolutely. Play the point, mix it till you can get a forehand that you can hit cross court and open up the space. Goes bomb, forehand, gets it in. That's the one right there. Back for the forehand again. Yeah. See, that's just too difficult. He's, he's physically standing in the alley. I mean, I, I agree that this corner is where the pay dirt is. It's where you're going to get a lot of help from the breeze. But where he was standing, the physics on that, it's, it's really difficult to make that shot. So Back to Deuce. He used to have a little bit longer shot tolerance on that, on that because that ball was not the right time. See, that was a better combination. Better use because... You, you take a little bit off the serve because you know that the opponent has to get the ball back. And in the process of that, even that the pressure of getting it back, Hans is a little slow recovering out of the corner. It kind of opens up a lane. you got a clear place to hit to. It's so much nicer to hit into space in these big moments. Here he comes. That was his third match point. And, you know, it was... It was a dare, kind of a chip and charge move, but he got a volley above net level and just didn't adjust his racket angle on the racket. It's, it's a routine shot that he makes all day long. But again, there's no such thing as an easy shot in a big moment. Back to Deuce. Right now, this is, he's got to take his time because right now, this is the reason why Hans is competing again. For those that don't know, there was a match where they played in the 14th Easter Bowl where McNally had match points in the second but ended up losing in the third. What are you doing? Bad choice on the drop shot. Had McNally right where he wanted him, had him in an uncomfortable spot, had him in a spot where he's lost a couple of match points, and he's got to be thinking about the past right there. And then you just throw him a wide open opportunity to get an easy point with confidence and a finisher. Break point fought off, back to Deuce. As I said earlier, that this is the hardest game to win. He's had three match points and one break point, and now here's another, his fourth match point. Never, never easy. But again, you know, he's just 
He's just gotten it done this year. He's gotten it done in Indian Wells on the slow courts. He's gotten it done down at the clay courts. He has an opportunity to be three-time national champion in the same year. Seldom has happened in the history of junior tennis. And it's a couple swings away from Johnny McNally. Yeah, it's tricky because 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 now it's, now the opponent knows where the choice was going to be. It, up. it goes back, and there it is, folks. There it is, national championship for Johnny McNally. The mother has given the fist pumps. Katie Mack is happy for her brother up there. National championships bookends. Katie McNally, girls 14s. Johnny McNally, boys 16s. Wonderful opportunity there. For both players and Johnny Mack just gets it done, folks. In tennis, they say it's a simple game. Johnny Mack holding serve every time the entire match. One of the most amazing, you know, displays of a boys 16 service holding here on Stadium Court. So John McNally, the top seed, your national champion in the boys 16 singles bracket. And he's safe at the dinner table now. He can follow his sister Katie as a national champion. And straight sets for him, 6-4, six, 6-4. Four, six, four. But how about the battle of Connor Hans, the nine seed? you got to give credit to him to stick in tough. But uh, at the end of the day, it came down to serves. Yeah, being able to hold serve, shot selection, a couple of drop shots maybe not at the best time and, and obviously hands the serve percentage sort of went up and down where McNally was able to connect to some patterns that made the most sense I think Hans was a little bit more random at his choices and his play more of a general competitive where Johnny was a little bit more you know I think connected to what he saw so I think it was a well played match from, from John's standpoint clearly you know these big moments are always going to have some nerves and tension and we saw that in both players but John was able to stave off the demons from the 14's Easter Bowl and get it done so again congratulations to him his family, the coaches at Harper's Point, Queen City, and obviously, uh, you know, the McNally family. Bob, your final thoughts on the performance of both the top seed, now your national champion, and the nine seed, Connor Hans. Well, it was a great match, and as uh, Mark alluded to many times, that just that uh, John uh, McNally just uh, was too 